Thanks. All good? My father was a world champion. Dad's uncle was a world champion, but on my mum's side, mum's uncle and mum's brother was world champion. So as a kid growing up watching my dad win world championships and hoping and dreaming that maybe one day that you could win a world title like your dad. Well, in 1979, my dream come true, but it was much bigger than better than whatever a kid could ever imagine that, you know, I won my first world title with my dad at Sydney's show, which is the Wimbledon of wood chopping which was an unbelievable thing, but I finished up winning that world title 21 years straight. Um, 11 years with Dad and, and, and then 10 years with my brother Peter. So yeah, I classify myself as one of the luckiest guys in the world, probably. We've got the concept that came about with David together when we were photographing him on the first shoot under the beautiful big tree. And he took us to a place where his family, they had won a few world championships. <laughs> and he's standing under the tree and he said, if the tree could talk, imagine what it would say to us. And I said, why? And he said, because it's witnessed all of the years of the family and the legacy of you know, the championships. And I said, I said um, wow, what the tree saw. And that became the title, so he gave me a high five and he said, I'm an artist. <laughs> and enjoyed that moment of coming up with a little bit of poetry, I suppose you call it. We've got the underhand with your cut between your legs, the standing block where we cut up and stand, the single double hand of cross cut soaring, and then you have tree fillings. They said that if you can win the, the underhand and the standing block world title in Sydney, you can call yourself the best. Okay, but if you can win the two of them in the one year, it's called the double, which is one of the hardest things in the world to do. There's only been seven people that's ever won it, and I've done it six times. The only person in the world has ever done it six times. And I just know just how much work and effort has gone into that. I might let me dog in, because yeah? Yeah. she's a whinger. She'll stop whinging as soon as she comes in. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, well, sorry, Miss Muffet. Sorry, Jordan. This is, uh, this is your house. Sorry, Jordan. Sorry about that. We cut two now. My dog come in. Her name is Jordan. Uh, she's never been outside in her life and she whinges. So uh, if you want to come back as, a, come back as a, an animal, come back as a foster pet. Yeah. The idea is to create a photograph that looks like a painting is maybe a mix of a painting and a photograph so I like the idea of hand coloured photography. The inspiration has come from the works of John Dempsey. I see the frame really as, as a, as a theatre and that person is there posed in a particular way often with a prop or some sort of costume. And you see with Dempsey's portraits up close he uses lots of little brush strokes. So, so I would be doing this a little bit differently than hand tinting, which is rubbing in. They, there's, there's not really a lot of detail as much as this, but I'm a sucker for punishment. It's, I think it's nice because you are working with a photo at the base of the, of the image, which is very perfect. So my job will probably be whether I like it or not to create le less perfection, which is the hand, which is, you know, that's what I like. <laughs> well, when you have a hundred axes and they're all sitting in a cupboard, what we decided to do was, was, was actually name them. You know, I bought two axes a while back and, we, and I had all these names, so Bill and Ben, and the next one was the Flower Pot Man, and then, and then there's Brutus, and there's, you know, there's this hot dog, and there's because I had a hot dog one day, and you know, and uh, so we do name all the axes, only because you know exactly that, okay, I'm gonna grab hot dog, because I know that that axe is gonna cut that. And there's one called Henry, my father-in-law was called Henry, and you know that axe I've won world titles with, so I I'll grab that for a, for a particular event. So 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 every, every every axe has got a name. I find it interesting myself, where I have a miniature sort of portrait of a very um, well-rounded, robust sort of Australian um, athlete like David. He has a, he's, he has a lovely presence. 
And here also the expression on his face is really beautiful. It's very strong and it's also very gentle and it's questioning like he's bringing something to it. This is a chance for an artist to interpret the, his, his story. Um, and, and through this, this project too, I've, because I've traveled to his place where he lives and spent time with him, so I get to know him and learn about him, and then we sort of there's there's a part collab collaborative nature of this really. So I'm becoming familiar with my subject, and then the result is there for people to they'll see the work, but there's a story behind it as well. And and I also think that I couldn't get David to give me this expression if I didn't spend time with him. And if we didn't get along, you know, I think we get along. <laughs> it helps to get along. Yeah, it's amazing when you sit back and think about it. 186 world championships, 175 Australian titles. The only person in sporting history that ever won a thousand championships and it's about 1800 and something now. My sport has taken me for over 40 years and I'm an OAM and one of my mates said to me that was the OAM stood for Oversized Australian Male, so I've got one of those titles. Made, made Tasmanian of the Year. I enjoy life. I wake up in the morning with a smile on my face. Uh, there's 24 hours in the day. You can only do what you can in that day. And hopefully that rubs off people. I, I, I'm a bit of a clown. I, I love taking the mickey out of myself, everybody else. Wood chopping is not one of those high profile bunny sports. But um, I tell people that I, I classify myself as a millionaire. I might not have it in money, but uh, there's no way known that you can put a value on um, winning a world champ championship, uh, winning a world championship with your dad. And the last world title that I won with my dad, it was uh, five and a half months after his heart bypass. And he, and he hugged me and he kissed me and he told me that he loved me. Well, money can't buy that. Uh, you know, how fortunate at the end of the day, mate. <laughs> Attention. Can you, can you